Today we're doing the story of the farmer and the donkey in the well and um, its mystical meaning. And this is pretty profound, man, because you might have heard the common meaning, the common moral of the story, but you haven't heard the mystical one yet. There was once a stubborn donkey that had fallen into a well. It was deeply surrounded by the well and outwardly by creation on all sides, by all creation itself. The farmer and his friends tried to rescue that donkey by throwing dirt into the well, and the donkey just stayed in the center, shaking off that dirt and stepping on top of each new shovelful, surfing the change. And with each new presentation, the donkey remained at the center of the well. For the donkey, it was easy. It had the walls of the well as references, so it could easily surf and abide in the place of the center. The donkey just stayed in the well while the world around him moved and changed, resting evenly at the place landmarked as center easily landmarked as at the center by the steadiness and dependability of those walls of the well. For the donkey, its place was easy to know, to find, and to abide in. I mean, as if where else could he go but to abide in the middle? So people threw in the dirt, and the dirt level rose and rose, but the exact center location of the heart of the donkey relative to the vertical axis, no, vertical axis <laughs> of that well remained unchanged as shovelful after shovelful of each new arising presentation of dirt arose and as the donkey just surfed his central location, restfully surfed it exactly between the sampled borders of the walls of the well, until finally the donkey, still resting in the middle of all arriving change, was standing out of the well, then high upon the earth above the well, and then on top of a mountain, and through it all, the donkey really never went anywhere, though the world around him changed. And that is how we surf the place between opposites, a place that is not different than the center of the well and easily found between the walls of appearances. And also that is not different from the top of the mountain. So the common moral of this story is that when people throw dirt on you, you just shake it off and rise above it. You know, I mean, that's, that's a good moral. But the mystical lesson is pretty cool, too. And so here we go, uh, continuing on that message. And, and so all, all that is outward from that place is all that is outward from your place whether in a well or on a mountain. <laughs> and all the comings and goings of creation and life around you with all its presentations. All the changes from the arrival of dirt at the bottom of the well to the standing on top of the mountain are what you timelessly, changelessly surf from the ground zero of your existence is the changeless place of abiding in the middle. And it's not different from the exact place where you are, comfortably resting evenly while surrounded by a changing creation on all sides. So whether the sweet spot in the well or the sweet spot on the mountain, both are made sweet because it is the place where you are. You, the place of your existence itself, is the sweet spot. And as the verse says, remove the sandals from your feet, because the place where you stand is the place of holy ground. 
And though not a well, there is a way to use the human frame to set up the equivalent of an old-fashioned scale. And gathering two or more points to abide in and know what is in the midst of them. When you learn to practice in this way, you'll be similar to that donkey in the well because you have this steady reference on how to abide in the midst of change. But it's not, it's not really a well, it's the endless variety of creation all around you and having sampled these points, knowing how to abide in the midst of them. Yes, even the features on the mountain itself can continue moving and changing, and you can still rest steadily ever at the sweet spot in the steady, changeless place at the heart of creation. Now, I, I made a video and an article on the actual technique of how to do that. It's called How to Surf or Skateboard Without a Board, and I'm going to put the link to that video, maybe there, but you can also find it written out in detail on my website uh, called PrestonFlat.com. And uh, what it is, it's an actual technique of how to use the human frame to establish the equivalent of an old-fashioned scale or an, the equivalent of what that donkey had in the well by establishing a point on the right, a point on the left, and having, those, having established those points as the world presents itself, there's a tendency to lean toward what we like and lean away from what we don't like. And that's called, uh, leaning toward is called affinity, like you want, you want to lean that way. <laughs> and leaning away from is called aversion. But there's also this, this concept of trust in this place with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. And how are you going to know to lean not if you don't have some kind of a reference? And this is so cool, man. It's said where two or, or more are gathered in my name, there am I in the midst of them, right? Kind of makes sense. And that's two or more people, where two or more people are gathered in my name. That's a verse from the Bible. There am I in the midst of them. But the thing is, it also works if it's two or more points. That's what I'm trying to tell you. And if you can, if you can gather a point on one side of the body and a point on the other and learn how to surf the place between them, it's just a way to be steady in life and to um, choose this sweet spot, this straight and narrow place, this treasure hidden in a field, um, and make this, um, yeah, and hold to this one good thing, no matter what the, the outer presentations of life, no matter how they may arrive, and no matter what the invitation may be to depart from this place outward, into the changing world. If you can learn to hold to this place, that's a way, uh, it kind of helps reconcile creation, but if you don't hold to this place and you go out into the world, it kind of stirs things up in creation. So, um, I know that's kind of long-winded, but you, you just got to read the article, man. The article will tell you how to surf or skateboard without a board. And man, I do need you to subscribe. You can see how many subscribers I got, man. It's just pitiful. I really need you. <laughs> Come on, man. Subscribe. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Bye.